Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Foresight Radio Podcast, where we speak with industry leaders and innovators who are taking steps to make the senior living industry better. Our goal is to disrupt the industry and leave it better than we found it. Now on with the show. Guys, hello, Rachel here from Senior Living Foresight and got another fantastic episode of our Foresight Radio Podcast. This is an interesting episode for me. As you all know, we have our live stream, which is Tech Tuesday, and we have our host, Abby Ritchie, of that, and she dives into all things tech. So I am going a little out of my depth here, but I'm hoping this is going to be helpful for you guys because I am a tech dum-dum. My husband built our computer. He has set all of this up for me. So Without further ado, I want to dive into my guest, who is Burton Kelso, and he is a tech guru, much like our own senior savvy here, uh, Abby Ritchie, who hosts Tech Tuesday, and he knows all things tech. He speaks about tech, and he is going to school me today, and we're going to have fun talking about social media across uh, posting. We're going to talk about tech things that you need to drill down on before the end of the year. And that is it for me talking the entire episode because I don't know what I'm talking about. But I think this is going to be fun and Burton's going to help me along the way. So, Bert, I'm going to turn it over to you. How are you? I'm doing good, Rachel. Yeah, you can't say that you don't know technology. I will say something that I heard uh, recently, which is uh, everybody is tech savvy because uh, we um, we you stream movies. We all stream movies. Uh, You've got a smartphone and you know how to send email and get on social media um, and make phone calls with it. And I mean, everyone's involved, but I think the challenge is with technology is that a lot of people just get under the assumption that, uh, kids know it and they just come out of the womb knowing technology. Like you've got an infant coming out with a <laughs> smartphone in their hand, you know, just, uh, hold it and texting as they're like coming out. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. We introduce our children to technology and they're just a little bit more adventurous than your average adult. And I think most adults are one of the things that adults can learn is just be adventurous about your tech. There's not too much that you can do uh, that's going to ruin your device. So just click away, download apps um, and just embrace it because there's a lot of benefits to uh, technology. I mean, you've got, you know, your echo devices where you can talk to loved ones. Again, you've got apps that allow you to uh, FaceTime people. You've got the internet that just opens you up to a whole new world of, of experiences and ideas. And it will, you know, if you want to learn anything about anything you've got on the internet, you can just hop on the internet. So technology is wonderful. And my job is to help people embrace it. Uh, so it can, they can help use it to help them get more out of their lives. Absolutely. I love that. And first of all, Thank you. I already feel 20 times better about myself. So I I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah. You, yeah. You're no tech dummy. Yeah. Don't use that. I would. And what's sad, Rachel, you know, have you seen the people where they're like, uh, oh, man, uh, especially s- older adults or when they're like, oh, yeah, I don't know anything about technology. I think that was funny 15 years ago. But in today's world, it's like you're missing out. You know, you're jokes on you. Yeah. You know, there's just so much that you could be doing with it. And um, there's, and to not limit people, uh, with my company integral, you know, we've had our techs go out to people that are as old as a hundred, uh, in their nineties that just fully embrace tech. You know, there's certain things awesome. that they can't do. Like I know myself, there was one of our customers who's a hundred. And so there was a show she couldn't get loaded on a Roku apps and her, uh, kids that are in their seventies, they couldn't figure it out either. So I go over, we're downloading, um, I forget what app it was, but, um, her phone rings and it's her son FaceTiming her and she's like, well, hold on. And then she FaceTimes her kid, you know, hundred year old lady. And I'm like, okay, that's, you know, you, the sky's the limit. You know, you just can't let age uh, stop you when it comes to learning technology. But the only thing she couldn't do, she could text, but she couldn't email, which was interesting. And her kids kept saying, mom, you gotta, you gotta learn how to email. And I'm like, what's the point? (laughs) <laughs> she can receive text messages. <laughs> Why would you need to email? I mean, Rachel, don't you think text is better than email? Oh, I mean, ab- absolutely. I mean, particularly if you don't have a, a strong need for it, like if you don't have to email. I mean, if you want to just stay connected with your friends and family, if you're at that, you know, at that point in your mm-hmm. in your in your life and in your career where that's not really a thing. It's like if I didn't have to check email. 
hundred percent. No, it's, yeah. it takes so much time out of your day. And I feel like information gets lost and it's, it's tricky. You got to get it down to a system and like organize like your email inbox to make it work for you. And so that you're not doing so much work. I, I, I would say, um, but Bert, one of the other things I love that you talk about here in in sort of your intro here as we kick off the podcast is this concept of technology connecting people. One of the things I want to talk about is there's there's always sort of this 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 dark side or stigma to technology of actually isolating us in 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 a way, particularly when we talk about social media. You know, we're talking about Instagram, TikTok. I know you have some interesting things to say about TikTok here. Um, but what I love is when used in in the right way and and the right source of technology, you can really connect with people in a in a really powerful way. So I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts on that and kind of let you have at it with that. Yeah, so it's um, you wouldn't have the emergence of Zoom. Uh, Microsoft got a little bit better with Teams. I mean, I think they still use Skype. And I think Microsoft was kind of the fore, forerunner on the whole video conferencing. And of course, Apple is too with uh, FaceTime. But a lot of those video conferencing apps really came to the forefront. And it's really a great idea to be able to have access to that technology. Now, if you've got fast internet or even medium internet, you can definitely video conference loved ones and just have conversations. I know an unfortunate incident that I can share that happened during the pandemic is that uh, we have a couple uh, who the husband passed away during the pandemic and they were the only family members in our city. So all their relatives were like spread out across the United States and the wife wanted to have a memorial service for her husband and she didn't know how to use Zoom. So I had to go through and set up the whole Zoom memorial service call. She uh, didn't even have, a, she didn't even have a webcam because her, uh, yeah. yeah, her husband was like, well, you don't want a webcam because it's going to people are going to hack into your system with the webcam. So oh. she had the minimum Internet. Uh, I let her borrow one of our company laptops and we went ahead and did a Zoom memorial. We sent out the Zoom request to like all of her family members who she had via email and a vast majority of them, probably about 30 people showed up on the Zoom call. And, you know, she got to memorial memorialize her husband. And at the end, I had a spare camera that I gave her so that she could keep in contact with family members. Uh, so it really turned out great. Um, and But that's what the pandemic has really done as far as helping connect people is that uh, you've got Zoom, you've got uh, Skype, you've got Teams, you've got Google, uh, what is it, Google Meetings. And also, yeah. if you've got uh, older adults who just aren't savvy with the computer, you can go out and buy them an Alexa Show device or a uh, Google Home, and they can talk with family members that way. So it definitely has brought the world closer. One other app I was going to talk about as far as bringing people closer yeah. is WhatsApp, because we have uh, several- Let's talk about <laughs> WhatsApp, because I'm always, and, and I'm sure you will, of course, correct me on this, but I am always hearing interesting things, you know, oh, it's encrypted. It's you know, it's for shady business. So let's let's talk about WhatsApp, Burton. <laughs> yeah, so WhatsApp is obviously made by Meta. I shouldn't say obviously, but it's created by Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything else. But it's a, <laughs> a voice messaging app that allows you to communicate with people all over the world. Now, the most popular form or way that people will use WhatsApp is that they will make international calls. Uh, and it it's, you know, it's basically voice over IP service. So your voice is going over the internet, and that's how people communicate. We've got several customers that use WhatsApp to talk to relatives that are overseas. Now, on another note, Rachel, is that small businesses uh, are now turning to WhatsApp to use as their main number because cyber criminals now are starting to steal mobile phone numbers. Oh, and wow. Committing okay. SIM card fraud. So if you use a WhatsApp number as your main business number, then it kind of prevents that fraud uh, from going on with your, your smartphone. Because, I mean, they can always steal your number. But what you don't want criminals to do is to get a hold of your mobile number because if they get enough information about you, they can call your provider and say, hey, I want to switch phones and oh, service. Yeah. And then they can move your number over. So a lot of people, that's that's their home number or their pers or their uh, public number is, a, is WhatsApp. And the good thing about WhatsApp, it'll work on just about any device. I know there are older adults that may have a track phone or 
Um, I forget the, there's another mobile phone that makes, that runs on the Android operating system, but most of those smartphones can, you can download the WhatsApp and then you can talk to, talk to your loved ones anywhere in the world. So, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. I really like it. And Rachel, like you said, it is encrypted. So it is a very safe way to talk and that's okay. good. Yeah. That's good. yeah that's good. <laughs> See, you know, I know we're on opposite ends of the spectrum. You're like, you're going good. I'm going, to, it's very Star Wars, right? Like, right. like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, listen, but the, this force can be used for, for, for bad here. All right, Burton, we got to talk about it, but no, you do. You bring up a great point when you are talking about uh, safety features and the fact that it is encrypted is, is certainly not the worst thing in the world. No, definitely not. <laughs> uh, I love that. So I, I want to dive into this idea that I teased of cross social posting, promoting social media. A lot of people in senior living are really trying to figure out this, this social media thing. And, and our founder, Steve Moran, is a big fan of communities using, in particular, TikTok. You know, obviously, again, talking about the pandemic, there was an uptick in TikTok, right. <laughs> you know, you got the dance moves, they got so popular. But now, you know, I think communities have found an interesting sort of way into this platform to highlight residents dancing, to show their care staff, to to market their community in a way, in a real way that shows real faces, real people, and real experiences. Um, and I know you have some thoughts on. TikTok on social media in general. So help us out here. What's, you know, do you have a strategy? Do you have some tips on diving into social media, particularly in, in senior living? Yeah, definitely. The probably one of the best things that uh, seniors can do as far as social media is to keep it to a bare minimum of what you need to use. Obviously, you're going to go with uh, Facebook because the interface is a little bit uh, user friendly. Most seniors are going to have a desktop computer. And Facebook is definitely geared um, as far as a desktop application and uh, an app, an app for smartphones and tablets. And it's um, it's an interesting mix because you know now Facebook is starting to I won't say go the way of the dodo, but it definitely become a very uh, volatile network. But I think for most seniors, it's probably a good starting point to go with because in a lot of instances, they're just going to connect with a few, few friends. And they're really not concerned what's going on as far as their feed or their wall is concerned. Uh, and it's really a good jumping off point. Now, Rachel, you talked about TikTok. And the interesting thing about TikTok, remember back during the pandemic, it started all, out only as an app only program. It was only available for smart devices. But now, if, if I guess to open it up to the entire population, you can also use TikTok on your computer. So you can actually create posts. Uh, follow people from an actual computer rather than making an older, uh, a senior adult go and say, you got to do TikTok on your smartphone. That's not the case anymore. They can go to TikTok.com and log in and post from there, which is shows how things have evolved with social media uh, during the pandemic. You can, yeah. same thing with Instagram. Instagram used to be only one of those, you can only use it on your smartphone. But now Instagram, you can just go to Instagram.com you can monitor your account, you can uh, post stuff, and it's great. One of the other things I was going to mention about TikTok too is that it's evolved from where well, you can only post videos on TikTok. Now you can just post the standard photo and it can be considered as a TikTok post. Now it may not go viral right. like a lot of the video posts. And for you know older adults, that's not necessarily the case. More of it is I just want to stay in contact with people and I just want to see uh, what's going on. So for senior uh, living, um, I almost said nursing homes, and I hate using that word, mm, but uh, yeah, for long-term yeah. care, long care facilities, it would be a great idea to uh, post um, stuff using TikTok because, and this leads into the cross-posting aspect that we were talking about, Rachel, because every social media platform has its own audience. So you may have older adults that are on Facebook or only, and maybe they only use Instagram. You may have some that are only on Twitter, believe it or not. You bring up a couple interesting things, right? Like you talk about 
different audiences, you talk about going viral, all there's all these puzzle pieces to to social media, right? And that that can feel overwhelming, you know, um, particularly where where do I post? Where do I want to engage? Um, do you make it easy on yourself and just post sort of a a slight tweak to the same content on all of those channels? Um, and then if you do want something to be successful, let's also dive into that I feel like there's no way to beat the algorithm. It's kind of whatever you're drawn to. So if you're more of the, I want to just get on Pinterest, because we always forget about Pinterest being a social media platform, and it definitely that. is. Some people just, it's cathartic for them to get on uh, Pinterest and just uh, save recipes and find useful articles, and, and that's okay. So I think you're absolutely right as far as making sure that you do find a platform that's going to work for you. The other thing I was going to mention is that you want to use social media in a manner that's going to work for you, meaning that you don't necessarily have to worry about what's trending as far as music or the types of posts that are being made across social media. You want to go with whatever you're comfortable with. So if you just are comfortable sharing cat videos or cat photos, then make that the, your thing. If you just want to show, um, just show, well, I should say other pets or just show what you're doing day to day, uh, just do it. I don't know if, Rachel, if you're familiar with uh, Shirley Curry, she's the uh, Skyrim grandma. So are you familiar with the video game Skyrim? Uh, yes, I am familiar with the game. Yeah, absolutely. So Shirley is an 86-year-old lady who plays Skyrim. And she has a YouTube channel. You can check her out at Shirley, Shirley Curry or Shirley S. Curry. Uh, but she has, I think she used to be active on Twitter and Facebook. But now she is gotten out of the habit of posting her Skyrim videos every day and just shares relevant content. But this is an example of an older adult who's really thought outside the box of what they want to do with social media and how it's really uh, enhanced her life. Because now she's a globally known uh, personality on social media. One of the other trends that's going on, especially with older adults on social media, is the whole aging you know, the uh, fab fit and 50, fit and 60, fit and, fit and 70. Mm -hmm, uh, there's mm -hmm. um, plenty of channels for older adults if they need inspiration as far as fashion or fitness that they can follow, say, on Instagram. And it seems like Instagram is the hot channel for that audience of older adults who want to stay fit and youthful to follow profiles on, on there or to even be active. There's a lady that I communicate with trying to think of her um her handle on Instagram but yeah she just hit a hundred thousand followers and she's uh like in her mid 60s and all she does is she uh is an influencer so she's consistently getting new outfits and she just dances and and Rachel I have to say it and um um oh, I forget the lady's name Marsha she knows it too she's not the best dancer but she just is in the middle of nowhere Missouri and just decided to pick up Instagram. And now she's, you know, at 100,000 followers. It's, it's amazing. That's unbelievable. And it sounds like to the, the point you're making, which I think some people it gets lost on is just the consistency too. like right. posting about something that you're passionate about, but also being consistent about it. Right. But I mean, that's cool, too. I mean, they recommend if you want to stay active, with your friends that you need to post at least twice a week. But again, if you're an older adult and you're just like, eh, I just kind of want to look at it, or I just want to be a lurker, which a lot of older adults are, that's okay. You don't yes. have to feel the pressure of, well, I've got to stay consistent in posting. Now on the flip side, let's say you, that you do, or you are like the marketing person for a senior living space, then yes, you do need to be a little bit more consistent and uh, make sure that you're selling, sharing relevant posts uh, out to your community so that they can become a little bit more engaged. I know you had some thoughts, particularly on um, using LinkedIn too. Um, and again, our company, Senior Living Foresight, and our fan founder, Steve Moran, were big, big on LinkedIn and using it and connecting and, and sharing what we've got going on on there. And I know you have some thoughts on the platform and how you can use it. So please, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. LinkedIn's incredible. The algorithm on LinkedIn allows you to see more of your friends. I think if you're dealing with uh, business professionals, it's a great way to make new connections because one of the best things about LinkedIn is the introduction option when you want to connect with somebody. LinkedIn of course, it's like, well, you can do it however you want to. But the best way, obviously, is if you could connect with somebody, you can send them a personalized invitation. 
And if you personalize it, it's going to make your potential follower or connection more apt to accept your connection. Whereas on the other social media platforms, if you message somebody, it goes into the spam folder and it's up for the user to like check their spam folder to see, did anybody new message me? But on LinkedIn, you can just instantly make that connection. So for like, again, business professionals, it's a great network to hop on for, let's say, retired or older adults. Great way to get on and maybe stay in contact with those uh, old work relations that you dealt with, because even though LinkedIn is kind of considered the business network, ever since Microsoft purchased it, it's really no longer that. It's more of a just a regular social media channel that has uh, a little polished or professional edge to it. Uh, but other than that, as far as the content and the conversations that you can have, it's just like any other social media network. So if you, you know, if you're retired or uh, maybe looking post to getting retired, you might want to get connected on LinkedIn so that at least you have some people to stay connected with and that you can communicate with. And you can still maybe plan those coffee dates or dinner dates or whatever, because on a lot of the platforms, you know, you, you just may not be able to find that. Then, you know, we're heading into the new year and, you know, I would love to hear from you. Let's kind of hit on some of those things, you know, tech trends, tech things that you're seeing and, and, and tips that you can give us here as we head into 2023. So I think it's important for everybody to have some sort of tech resolutions that they're going to make every year, um, whether it be to get better at technology or uh, learn a new piece of technology or just get tips to help you learn your technology or use it a little bit more effectively. So one of the one of the tech, uh, what am I saying? The tech resolutions, yeah, that you should follow in 2023 is to start really getting serious about cybersecurity. Because I think most people think that uh, cybersecurity is, revolves around just hackers getting into your devices. But I'm here to throw something out there that's mind blowing, is that every tech device that is on the market is 99% safe from most of the cyber threats that are out there. So unless you, so I mean, like you don't really have to worry about your smartphone being hacked or your computer being hacked, or even your social media accounts being hacked if you follow a specific protocol. Um, and I think if we could defeat cyber crime, if more people were aware of what's going on and how these threats are affecting us. So keep in mind uh, that most of the cyber threats out there require some form of user interaction, meaning that if you're going to get hacked or if your di device is going to get infected, you have to click on a link in an email or in a text message, or maybe you were tricked into divulging personal information because most cyber threats out there Rachel, are socially engineered. That means mm. that cyber criminals, which consist of terrorists and, um, um, you know, threat uh, sanctioned cyber crime, is designed to make you react to the posts that come in or the messages that come in rather than you thinking about it. So if yeah. there's um, a problem with your ship shipping during the holidays, or maybe they're out of order and you get messages like that, you're not going to think about it. You're just going to react, click, and then you're uh, in a world of hurt. Now, one of the other things I was going to mention as far as uh, stay on top of cybercrime <clears throat> is the whole password thing, because everyone gets lax on their passwords. And so in 2023, you really have to get out of the mindset of using passwords and use what's called passphrases instead. So passphrase is basically two unrelated words that create a password. So for example, a good passphrase would be like stinky chicken, because if you rely on your, your brain to create a password, you're always going to go to things that are familiar and that you're going to remember. Tech companies now are just in the mindset of, well, we're not going to, we're not going to support those old devices anymore. So if you got a closet full of junk or a basement full of tech items, just take it to the recycle center and let it go. And then finally, my favorite tip of the, of the tech resolutions for 2023 is to put down those devices and take more time for uh, those in your life. Because our tech devices are designed to be addicting. And it's important that you set those devices down on a regular basis, whether it be for a few hours or a complete day, just start to get into the habit in 2023 of making sure that um, you are taking time away from your tech devices and spending more time with family. This is the time of year to really slow down. It feels overwhelming. And I think one thing that always gets missed is, no, this is actually a time of the year created to 
not be so connected to our devices, to not always be in front of our screens, worrying about for you know all the all the things we have to wrap up before years, and it will get done. It will happen. You're okay. Pause and and spend some time with your family because this is this is you know specifically time in the year set aside to do that can't thank you enough for taking time out today i really appreciate it burton thanks for listening to foresight radio you can go ahead and subscribe wherever you get your podcast at apple podcast stitcher spotify and of course you can listen directly on our website thanks for listening and thanks for joining the conversation we'll talk to you soon